I wanted to make something that was set on an island because I wanted to make something that was very self-contained and the whole thing is quite self-contained. The way we make films is quite contained. I wanted it to be a single-hander, so it's mostly Mary's character who carries the film. And I wanted the locations to be controlled. So the idea of setting it on an island limits what you can do, really. You know, I have to be imaginative within quite strict constraints. But in reality, there is no actual island. None of it was shot on an island. The wide shot of the island is a pickup that we did months afterwards in Wales. We never stepped foot on that island, we just filmed it from the mainland. Everything that's set on the island is made up of a composite of locations that are around where we live, which feels a lot like an island. So I'm referencing a kind of British folk horror, the kind of one of the only unique bits of kind of British film culture that we have. I don't mean to criticise British film, but you know, it's, it's such a British thing, folk horror, and specifically English. And I wanted to make a Cornish folk horror rather than an English folk horror, which is why we're using the Cornish language. And rather, an English folk horror is all about stripping away the, the pastoral idyll to find the darkness underneath. And actually, I think this film's one level more. The pastoral English idyll isn't, was never there anyway. And so the surface is the ground. And what we do is dig under the ground to find the sort of the malevolent forces that are within the ground, which in, which in this case are kind of mother nature rather than anything sort of human. There was no work done at all on her backstory. So there's nothing in the script of her backstory and I didn't tell her anything of the backstory because I wanted her to, to contribute that really, or to make sense of the predicament that this woman is in and work out how she got there and what implications that has for the way she behaves during the film. That's not to say I didn't answer questions if she had questions, but she knows me well enough not to question me too much because I'll, I'll say I'm not, I'm not telling you. When I write a script, every character is just me. They're just different versions of me. And I'm quite introverted, so all the characters in the film are introverts because I can't write extroverts. So I try and write an extrovert. They're just cliches and stereotypes. And Mary is an extrovert. When she comes in and gives her part, it's, you know, she provides that nuance to the character or the balance to the character. So I try not to discuss any of the kind of backstory and just, and especially with a film like this where I'm not, I don't want to prescribe who this person is necessarily or whether this person is a person or represents something else. You know, I think that's, that's up to Mary to kind of decide and then the audience is to make sense of afterwards. On, and on a practical level, you know, that, that's how we collaborate. We're partners as well, so we, we, you know, we live together and we talk about this stuff all the time. So we've got a close working relationship and we've got a certain amount of intuition, um, which is great. Also, we've got, you know, the, the personal domestic side spills onto the, to the shooting the film sometimes, which is sometimes tricky, but, you know, that's, it's got positives and, and negatives. I work with such a small crew that, that are mostly, if they're not very good friends of mine, then they're family. So the whole personal, professional overlap is huge in the way we work because we're out on the extremity in Cornwall and it's a small little community and we work together very closely. So I don't know any other, uh, other way of working really. So, you know, it's, I, wouldn't change, I wouldn't change it for the world. If we're going to do colour, we're going to do a hell of a lot of colour. So it's saturated colour, it's really getting these pinging primary colours, that, getting that red that film can, can recreate. I don't think digitally I never see that kind of red that you get in film. So it was a real conscious decision if we we're going to make it colour to make it really colourful. And what I learned was that, you know, it's a completely different way of working if you're working with colour. So I read a quote the other day, somebody said, black and white captures faces, colour captures costume. Which, which is kind of true. On the previous movie it was black and white, so we could do anything really with the colour because it would never be in the film. And actually when people see colour photos from the shoot, they can't believe the colour of the costumes and the colour of characters' hair because they kind of imagined it differently. But with colour, you have to make every consideration because all of those colours are going to be on the screen. You can't hide anything. So, I mean, it was just credit to the, to the art department, really, that they created something that I think is so beautiful and, and colourful. My big influence all the time is a poem by A.E. Hausman called The Shropshire Lad, which, which goes um, into my heart, an air that kills from yon far country blows, what those blue remembered hills, what farms, what spires are those? That is the land of lost content, I see it shining plain, the happy highways where I went and cannot come again, which is about the past and about nostalgia and a, and a search for home, which the Cornish have a unique word for that doesn't exactly translate into English, but the word's hereth, and roughly speaking, it means a longing for home, and that doesn't necessarily mean a a specific place but a, a sense of where you belong so that's at the heart of most 
of, of the films that I make. That bit of poem ends the film Walkabout, which was Nick Rogue's second film, the film he did before Don't Look Now, which is a huge influence on me. And this is the film that everybody cites when they're writing reviews because of the red coat, which was an accident. Mary's character wasn't going to have a red coat, she was going to have a yellow coat. And at the last minute I changed it because I was worried that it looked like it was a reference to Charlotte Gansberg's costume in Antichrist. And then I changed it to red, thinking that that would be fine. And then on the first day of the shoot, somebody said to me, oh, that's a, that's a nod to Don't Look Now, which it, which it wasn't. But, but Don't Look Now is a massive influence in other ways, as is all of Nick Rogue's work. My mentor, the playwright Nick Dark, always thought, we've got a lot more in common with a lot of America in Cornwall than we have with England. We, you know, we, there's a sort of Wild West kind of mentality Within, within Cornwall, which a lot of it's kind of been pacified and the rough edges have been taken off, but it's still in, in the culture and it's in the, in the lifeblood of, of the place. So I, I would hope that American audiences get the film and relate to it. I do sometimes worry that the kind of that ancient history, the 3,000 year old history of the Standing Stones that we're kind of tapping into, whether American audiences understand that, but it's a stupid thing to say because you know, the audiences all over the world are far more intelligent than filmmakers are, so the danger is you underestimate the audience, and the, un the audiences are, are much brighter than, than, than I am, so I've got, I've got great faith in the audience. It's a bit of a paradox the way I feel about the audience, because on one hand I know that I make films that not everybody's going to like, and I, I'm deliberately experimental in what I do, and I say out loud, oh, I don't mind if people don't like it, you know, I'm, oh, I, if people hate it, that's great, because they're having a really, you know, strong reaction to it, but also I'm human and I want everybody in the world to love the films and give me adulation. So it, it's a sort of paradoxical kind of situation. So yeah, I mean, it's just a real privilege to be here. Me and Mary have just been saying, you know, can't believe it, we're staying in the hotel just over there and we're right bang in the middle of New York and we're going to watch our film tonight at the Walter Reed. So everything else is just a bonus.